All right, so the objectives of this video are going to be the indications. Why do we do this exam? The anatomy. I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of uh, the gastric anatomy. And then scanning technique. And then some pathology. So the indications for pyloric stenosis are projectile vomiting. That's uh, the number one reason to order an ultrasound to rule out pyloric stenosis. The vomiting usually begins gradually um, over the first few weeks of life and then it uh, and then increases over time to include vomiting at every feeding and it should be projectile. A uh, delayed diagnosis of this um, condition can lead to malnutrition, failure to thrive, dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, and up to and including shock. So it is important that we find the pyloric stenosis early on. Okay, so here you have uh, some diagrams of the anatomy. Um, this is a drawing of a longitudinal hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. You can see the thickness of the wall here and the length. This would be the, the antrum of the stomach. Here is a Gray's anatomy drawing. Here is your esophagus, the fundus of the stomach, the antrum, and then the pylorus is right here. So, and then this is duodenum. Okay, so let's get this a little bit bigger. So as I said before, this is your esophagus. You know, you eat your food through your mouth. It goes down your esophagus and down into your stomach. It enters your stomach uh, through the esophageal sphincter. Um, once it goes in there, your stomach begins to uh, release gastric acids and contracts to uh, to make the food into a uh, into what's called chyme. And then as uh, as that partially digested food makes its way down into the antrum of the stomach, it will reach the pyloric area. Here you have another sphincter called the, the pyloric sphincter or the pyloric valve and that's usually closed. Once the pressure um, increases a certain amount, it will open to allow food to pass into the first part of the intestines, the duodenum. This is a very clear drawing here. Alright, so these are some um, sonographic images of normal pylori. Um, here you have a longitudinal image. Here you see a little bit of liver, some um, some fluid and air. This is a pretty distended stomach over here to the right. And then the food passes through there and through this tiny little channel right here into the duodenum, which is mostly filled with gas right there. Here's another view, same thing, stomach. You know, mildly distended with some uh, contents in it, air bubbles as well. The food goes through here. And here's the channel, so you can see it's open. Here's your gallbladder, this is liver. Same patient, liver, gallbladder. Um, pylorus is completely open there, you can see these little folds here. And you can see the, du the duodenum right here. And the food passes through there. So this is a completely negative exam. Another example here with air and reverberation artifacts. And here you can see the channel is open. So you would have stomach, antrum, pyloric antrum, and then this is the pyloric valve here, or the pyloric sphincter. And then a transverse image right here. So you're actually longitudinal on the body, and you're getting the pylorus and transverse right here. Circular, looks kind of like the duodenum. Um, you could also see peristalsis in this area. So when you're scanning, you start right here in the epigastrium. You use your pancreas, your liver, left lobe of the liver, and the and the gallbladder as your landmarks. So you can begin at the pancreas and then angle up and slightly to the right, to the right, and you'll catch it there. Um, Anterolaterally, laterally, it will be the gallbladder. Superior will be the the left lobe of the liver. Or you can start at the left lobe of the liver and angle down and catch it that way as well. And you'll be transverse in the body and you'll be getting the pylorus in a longitudinal plane. And then when you go sagittal on the body, you get the pylorus in a transverse plane. All right, so you want to use a high frequency transducer, a nine, and on some small babies, you can use a 15 and get some very exquisite images. You want to start with the baby supine. Um, you can have water dextrose or uh, sweeties with you. Um, they come in little, in little containers like this, so you can actually dip a pacifier in, or other ones where you can squeeze drops into the pacifier. And the babies usually love that, and they'll calm down if they're very fussy. If the baby's very gassy, um, you can, one, try pressure. They're not going to like that. Parents also not going to like that. They're going to ask you, are you hurting the baby? No, you're not. But pressure can move the gas away. 
Also, if you put the patient on the right lateral decubitus, the gas that's here should go up into the fundus of the stomach and the fluid should shift down. And that typically is a good, uh, a good window to get the, the pylorus. All right, so now the pathology. The number one reason we do this is for hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So it is a considered a gastric outlet obstruction because the pylorus is the outlet of the stomach. Um, the muscles of the mucosa of the pylorus are hypertrophied, so they're very thick. And what they do is they cause a stenosis. The channel where the food is supposed to pass can't pass because of the, the, the size of the muscles. Um, it typically occurs uh, four to eight weeks, though you can see it earlier. Sometimes you can uh, see it later as well. But if the baby's like four months and super chubby, they're not going to have pyloric stenosis. So you can forget about that. It's the most common cause of infant obstruction requiring surgery and the most common cause of surgical vomiting in an infant. Um, clinically, historically, they've had this, uh, this clinical sign called the palpable olive sign where you can feel like a mass right in the epigastrium. Um, I've done many pyloric ultrasounds. I've never really checked for this. On one patient, it was very very thin and emaciated, I actually was able to even see the palpable olive sign. That was the one time I saw that. But they say that it's it's uh, usually present in a lot of cases. Um, many sonographers also call it the little cervix sign because it looks like the image of the transvaginal cervix, just in miniature when it's when it's positive. Um, and the ultrasound parameters are three millimeters or more thickness. Usually they're more, usually it's four, five, six. And the length is 15 millimeters or more. Some studies say 16 millimeters, but I think 1.5 centimeters or 15 millimeters is a good cutoff point. All right, so here's a uh, an anatomic diagram again showing the esophagus, fundus of the stomach, antrum, and then you here you see the hypertrophy or thickened the muscle. So the food cannot pass as the stomach contracts and contracts and contracts, and as it expands with more fluid, there's only one way for it to go, and that's right back out through the esophagus. Usually very forcefully because you know the stomach is a very strong muscle and it's squeezing all right and here's the first part of the duodenum all right so here's uh, some ultrasound images of positive pyloric stenosis this is a sagittal or longitudinal image you see the muscle is very thick right here and this is why they call it the little cervix sign because it looks almost like a cervix uh, in a transvaginal cervical length sonogram and then here it is in transverse it looks like a target a bullseye or a donut. Um, I like donut because you know we're talking about the stomach so that makes sense. So transverse longitudinal very positive. You put this down you see that it's positive you don't have to worry about you know you can even see the striations of the muscle from from the hypertrophy and in some cases you can even put Doppler and there'll be increased Doppler there. Color Doppler. All right here's a couple more examples. Here you got your stomach with some fluid and gastric contents then this is the length and you can see the thickness here again with some free fluid right here all right very very thick muscle and long and then here's another example same patient with the free fluid some contents in the stomach very long and thick i mean i don't have the measurements for these images right here they were measured but they're not including these images but you can just look at it and know that it's positive all right, and then here's one in transverse. This is the stomach to the right, which is the left of the, of the patient's body. All right, so the, one of the pitfalls of this exam is pylorospasm, which is a transient mus, uh, muscular contraction of the pyloric muscle. Um, as you're scanning, it appears to be positive because it's very thick and the channel is long. Um, and these babies are having vomiting. But if you wait some time and or feed the baby, which some, uh, some centers require that to be part of the exam feeding, others don't. But you feed the baby and the stimulation of the food will cause the muscle to relax once, uh, once the food gets there. Um, I'll show you a video of this same exact patient where here it looks positive and then two minutes after feeding you can just see the food just passing right by. So keep that in mind. If you have a, like I said, if you have a you know, very chubby baby that's older and you're seeing this, it might be pleural spasm. All right. As always, um, thank you for tuning in. There's uh, going to be more videos in the future. And thank you. I'm Henry. Take care.